my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Good morning. Welcome on this Lord's Day. It is good to have you with us. As we begin in worship, we do have a few announcements. As always, first a reminder to read your FYI and bring that home with you as there are things worth remembering throughout the week. A few things for this week to note, um, especially for our confirmation class and youth group. Today, confirmation class is going to meet at Parent Chief Chapels um, at 4 o'clock, and so we hope to see you there. Um, and then we do continue with youth dinner and youth group here uh, afterwards. And then next Sunday, we're having um, an extra confirmation lesson or a special confirmation lesson right after the 11 o'clock service, about 12.15. 
So we hope to see our uh, confirmation students there for that as well. Also next week, we have a worship and music meeting after the 11 o'clock service. And then, of course, this is the spring season for cleaning out and decluttering your homes. Um, and right now, it's a time that the church is collecting some of those things. So we are collecting um, items for the youth yard sale, um, and those can go into the parish hall uh, anytime between now and Friday, May 5th at about noon. Um, and then also in the narthex, we're collecting um, clothing for First Presbyterian Church in Mount Holly. Uh, they do a community lunch program, and especially they need um, men's clothing, but men's and women's clothing are both acceptable as well. And we'll do that through April 30th. Um, our next blood drive is Friday, May 5th from 2 to 7, and you can sign up online using the instructions in your FYI. And then also just a note about our worship, um, we are bringing back the sharing of the peace this week. Um, and so that is something I know we haven't been able to do for a long time. Um, and I know that we are still at different comfort levels regarding COVID and other illnesses. So just a reminder to um, be respectful of one another's boundaries and preferences. Um, a handshake or a hug is great, but you can also greet one another with a wave, peace sign, a bow, or just a verbal greeting as well. Um, so just be aware that some people may not be at the same comfort level as you, um, but we're excited to bring that back into our worship service um, as, as part of... Um, as part of our worship today. I believe that concludes the announcements, um, and so now I invite you to please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In the waters of baptism, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that, rush us, that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outspring of the spirit, of the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reign forever. Amen.
Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work the one who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and I invite the children forward. All right. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. All right. So I have some pictures today, and I'm wondering if you can tell me what they are. Um, so it's a picture of an unfinished puzzle. Um, so what do you think that picture is going to be? A ball? All right. What do you think? I'll show the people out here, too. Yeah. Not really sure, right? Yeah, it's tough to know, you know what the picture is going to be when you don't have the puzzle box um, and when the puzzle isn't done yet, right? Um, now, do you think you'd be able to tell what the picture would be if we had more pieces in? Yeah? All right. So here's the second picture. Now, what do you think it's going to be? Elephant? Yeah? People out there might see an elephant, too. All right. But we still have pieces missing. So are you sure it's an elephant? OK. What do you think is, what do you think is in the bottom? Water? It's legs? Yeah? or the ground, yeah. Um, so we think it's gonna be an elephant and we can kind of fill in the rest of the picture, um, you know, but we, you know, so far we're pretty sure it's gonna be an elephant. But then when we look at the last picture, now what do you see? An elephant, a horse, and a cat, a gorilla, and a rat or a mouse. Yeah, six animals. Yeah. So there you go. So sometimes, even when, if we don't have the whole picture, we can't always make sense of what's going on, right? We were pretty sure there was going to be an elephant here, which there is, um, but there's also a whole lot more to see. Um, now, every time more pieces were added, the better we were at being able to figure out what the picture was. Um, and the same is true in our gospel reading today from the story of Luke. 
Um, in the story of Luke today, we have two disciples walking along the road on Easter, on the day of Easter. All right, the very first Easter in the afternoon, they were walking down the road, and they were trying to make sense of everything that had happened during Holy Week and Easter. They had heard that Jesus had, ri had risen from the dead, but they didn't know exactly what that meant yet. And they hadn't seen Jesus, so they weren't entirely sure. Then Jesus comes and walks with them on the road, but they don't know it's Jesus, right? So they don't have the whole picture yet. Um, first, they're trying to make sense of the picture, you know, just trying to put the pieces together with no help, um, trying to make sense of all the things that Jesus had said, all the things that they know about God, and they couldn't figure out exactly what it all meant. So Jesus comes, and even though they don't know it's Jesus, Jesus tells them about all the different stories in Scripture and helps put those pieces together. It helps make sense of it. He interprets um, those Scriptures for them and how they all point to Jesus and the resurrection. Um, but they still don't have the whole picture because they don't know it's Jesus. Um, but they're, they're starting to understand. Then finally, they gather together for a meal. And Jesus says a prayer. He blesses the bread and he breaks it. And finally, they recognize that this is Jesus. You know, so now they've got the whole picture like we had in the third puzzle, right? Um, they have the whole picture and understand we've seen the Lord. Jesus is raised from the dead. And this is really, really amazing. Um, and what do you think they do in that moment then? Yeah. You forget. All right. That's all right. Yeah, so in that moment, Jesus actually disappears, um, which you probably wouldn't have guessed. But right then, they run back, even though they're, you know, like seven miles away from where the rest of the disciples are at this point. They run back right away and tell the disciples, we have seen the Lord. Um, and, they, and they all celebrate together because they've seen Jesus and they know that um, he's risen from the dead and they tell all this stuff that Jesus has shared with them and help the other disciples put the pieces of the puzzle together too, okay? And the really great thing is we have seen the Lord too. It doesn't look quite the same when we're here, but every time we gather at the table for communion, every time we celebrate with bread and wine or with grape juice, we celebrate that Jesus is with us because Jesus promises to be with us in that meal. Um, and so we can leave church every week and say that we have seen the Lord too, right? Because we've seen him in the meal. Um, and that's, that's really wonderful. So just like the disciples run out at the end of the story, we're invited to run out after church and tell others that we have seen Jesus and that we, anyone can come and see Jesus here when we gather for communion. Um, that's when all the pieces fit together because we hear all the stories when we um, read them from the pulpit, we worship, and then we gather at the table, and that's where we see Jesus and the pieces fit together. So I invite you always to share with others the good news that Jesus is here, that Jesus is alive, um, and especially this Easter season to celebrate that Jesus has risen from the dead. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for always coming to us each week when we celebrate communion. We thank you for helping us put the pieces together even when things seem confusing or unsure or incomplete. Guide us and help us share your love with all the world as we are sent out. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. first reading is from the second chapter of Acts. <clears throat> Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, 
everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Holy wisdom, holy word. Let us say Psalm 16 responsively. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. <clears throat> the second reading is from the first chapter of 1 Peter. <clears throat> if you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, Live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Holy wisdom, Holy Word. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them whose name was Cleopas answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, 
they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told him what, has ha what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. A little bit stronger than Saturday night. They weren't quite as ready to respond. Um, please pray with me. Almighty God, who opens eyes and hearts, you journey with us through all our life. Assure us of your presence when we doubt and guide us as the way turns dim. Give us glad and generous hearts so that we may be traveling companions to the least, the lost, and the forsaken of our world. And fill us with hope for your resurrection promise when all the world will be fed and when your justice will reign. In the name of the one who invites us to the table and feeds us with heavenly food, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. In today's gospel reading, we return to that first Easter afternoon, the day of the resurrection. We meet two disciples on the road to Emmaus who were talking with one another about everything that they had seen and heard. Jesus, their teacher, was crucified, died, and had risen from the dead. And they were lost in their stories, trying to make sense of it all. And Jesus appeared on the road with them, but his disciples didn't know that it was Jesus yet. As Jesus walked with them and they told stories, Jesus told them, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted the scriptures. The disciples' hearts were burning as Jesus was talking with them on the road. And then as the disciples and Jesus approached the village, they invited him to stay with them. So when they gather at the table, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And in the breaking of the bread, Jesus was revealed to the disciples and they recognized who he was. Immediately, the disciples got up and returned to Jerusalem to tell them all that had happened. So we have a gathering on the road, stories from scripture and interpretation, a meal together where Christ is revealed and hurrying back out into the world to proclaim the good news. Gathering, word, meal, sending. Sounds a lot like worship, doesn't it? In fact, liturgical scholars, the experts when it comes to how we worship and what our worship looks like, would claim that this gospel reading is, in fact, what shapes our worship today. Reverend Dr. Gordon Lathrop, a retired seminary professor and leading scholar in Lutheran worship, claims that when we gather for worship, we are, in fact, the disciples on the road to Emmaus. He says all scriptures read on Sunday morning are read as if we are those disciples. But our journey doesn't end with receiving the word. 
Just like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, our journey ends with the breaking of the bread and being sent out into the world. We gather in this place to hear the stories of our faith, to hear God's word, to journey with Jesus and to join Jesus at the table. Jesus is revealed to us each and every week in the breaking of the bread. And after we encounter Jesus at the table, we are sent out into the world to proclaim the good news that we have seen the risen Lord. Each week as we gather for worship, we, we live this story. The story shapes our worship. Gathering, word, meal, sending. You see, our scriptures lead us to the table. They lead us to the table where Christ is revealed. The readings we hear lead us to the Eucharist. These readings leave our hearts burning for more. And it's in this meal of grace that we receive exactly what our hearts are burning for. Christ comes down to us, his body and blood present for us, so that we might be strengthened in our faith, and drawn further into communion with God and with one another throughout the whole world. Our whole worship service leads us to the table, because it's at the table where Christ's presence is revealed. And we need Christ to be revealed to us. Like the disciples before us, we cannot see unless Christ makes us see. We cannot know unless Christ opens our ears and our hearts to know. And so in this simple meal of bread and wine, Christ comes to us and Christ is made known to us. I was at a conference several years ago that focused on liturgy and what we do in worship, why we do what we do, and how Christ is revealed through our actions. One of the prevalent ideas from this conference was that every Sunday is a post-resurrection appearance of the risen Christ. Every Sunday we gather for worship. Every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection. And so Gordon Lathrop's words ring true. We are the disciples who on the day of resurrection, who every Sunday journey with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. We are the disciples who yearn for Jesus to join us at the table. We are the disciples to whom Jesus is revealed in the breaking of the bread. We are the disciples who are sent out with joy to proclaim the good news. Gathering, word, meal, sending. We are the disciples who gather in confusion who are weary after a long week, who are trying to make sense of the world and our faith. We are the disciples who feel forced to hide our faith in the midst of a terrifying and busy world. We are the disciples who are broken and scattered and running. But God gathers us together. We are the disciples who hear the word and our hearts burn with the fire of the spirit. We are the disciples who hear the stories of our faith and hunger for more. We are the disciples who are given hope through God's word. We are the disciples who having heard the stories of our faith yearn for Jesus to join us at the table. We are the disciples who gather around the altar to pray and give thanks for the meal that God has provided. We are the disciples who watch as the bread is broken so that we might be fed. We are the disciples who receive the bread that is Christ. We are the disciples who see the risen Christ, our Lord revealed as we encounter him in this meal. And then we are the disciples who hurry out again into the world to proclaim the good news that Christ is alive and that Christ comes to us again and again in the breaking of the bread. We are the disciples who live our faith in the risen Christ through word and deed, 
by loving and serving our neighbor, by generously sharing the gifts that God has given us, just as Jesus commanded us to do. Gathering, word, meal, sending. Gathering with the disciples along the road, hearing God's word read and interpreted, encountering Christ in the breaking of the bread, and hurrying out into the world with joy and hope, sharing the good news with all the world. This story of the road to Emmaus tells us what our worship is all about. This story tells us where to find Christ. This story tells us that Christ is revealed in the breaking of the bread. And gathering at the table is what it's all about. Hearing the word leads us to the table, to the climax of our worship, for it is in the breaking of the bread that we see Jesus. We gather at the table where Christ comes to us, and the gifts of his body and blood, broken and shed for us, strengthen us and inspire us to be sent out into the world. Gathering, word, meal, and sending, all done in the presence of our risen Lord, to celebrate his life-giving death and his glorious resurrection, and to give thanks for the grace that is poured out upon us. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.
And gathered now with all God's people throughout the world, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in hope and the joy of resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Please kneel or stand. As amen. Ever-present God, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread and in the bonds of community. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out your good news. Hear us, O oh God. <clears throat> As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field and the flowing waters. Care for the earth you lovingly create. Strengthen those who safeguard threatened land and water. Hear us, O oh God. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. Hear us, O oh God. <clears throat> Mothering God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for anyone who is ill or hungering for your comforting presence. This day especially, Walt, Joan, Linda, John, Pat, Connie, Vera, Michelle, Greg, Joan, Julia, Marie, Marilyn, and Gretchen, and those we name either silently or aloud, hear us, O oh God. You pour out your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized by gender or sexuality and those whose stories are not believed. From this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O oh God. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints, especially Connie Jackson, and Anthony Vassaro, as you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
Spirit is the shade in the heat of the day. Your spirit is the shade in the heat of the day. Your shadow of protection will drive all blues away. Your spirit is the shade. Please stand. Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, 
the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come and know Christ revealed to us in this meal. You may be seated. Communion this morning will be celebrated at the rail. You're invited to come forward both sides at the same time, filling in all the way across the rail. Receive the bread in your hand using an empty cup from the tray to have wine poured from the chalice, or you can also use a pre-poured cup of grape juice available in the tray. Please know that all are welcome to come forward. If you prefer to remain in your seat for safety or mobility reasons, we do have individual cups of wafer and grape juice in the narthex, and I will lead you in communion following the rest of the distribution.
Now, for those remaining in their pew or worshiping on the live stream, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. And now, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And now may the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. They say the darkest hour is right before the dawn, but the joy comes in the morning. They say the path is narrow and few will walk upon, but the light of hope keeps shining on. Yeah, the light of hope keeps shining on. I lift my eyes to the place where Start sinking when the waves come crashing in, but my God walks on the water. They say my God is able, he's gracious and he's kind, and he has me on his mind. Yeah, I'm always on his mind. I live say my God is able, he's gracious and he's kind, and he has me on his mind. I say my God is able, he's gracious and he's kind, and he has me on his mind. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. 
Alleluia, alleluia. Can you add three? 